I'm not sure if many people outside of the north of England know of John Grundy. To tell you the truth, I don't really know him either. I don't know if calling him just a television presenter is doing him a disservice, but that is how I know him. As the host of Grundy's Wonders and Grundy's Northern Pride, two architecture programs that played on local ITV stations when I was younger. Architecture. Boring, right? Kind of, yeah. But not with Grundy it isn't. I was first introduced to Grundy's Wonders while I was still in primary school, by my father, although I don't really remember my dad watching the show himself. And honestly, back then my sister and I only watched each episode to see the great boot of history animation. But something stuck with me, and many years later I found myself frantically searching YouTube and Google for any clips I could find from the show. Why? Did I really want to see that very 90s boot stomp animation so badly? No, I just wanted to know why we would watch 30 minutes of a show we really had no interest in just to see a 5 second clip. It turns out there was a DVD release of the 6th series of Grundy's Wonders. I bought it as my curiosity was through the roof, and within 2 minutes of watching the first episode I knew why I watched it as a kid, and why I would gladly keep watching it right then. Rock was the title of the episode, just Rock. 22 minutes of information about rocks and stone. How could anything longer than a few seconds on that subject be interesting? But that's where the brilliance of Mr Grundy shines through. This programme's about rock. Not this sort. This sort. I'm standing on sandstone. Well, actually I'm standing on grass, but underneath the grass there's sandstone. Do you know how much there is? How deep the sandstone goes beneath my feet? 3,000 metres. That's a lot of sandstone, isn't it, boys and girls? His infectious passion in anything he talks about is enough to keep me hooked. And now that I'm a bit older and old buildings and those sorts of things interest me, the actual content of what is said is just as enjoyable as the way it's presented. I needed more. Those six episodes weren't enough to satiate my hunger. So on to Grundy's Northern Pride, a later show that only had two series, but with both being available on DVD. I managed to snag Series 2 first, as Series 1 was priced at something ridiculous at the time, but I wanted to wait and watch the show in chronological order. Not that it would matter, each episode is self-contained, but still, I didn't know that at the time. A weird thing happened, or at least weird to me. There were two sellers on Amazon selling their Series 1 DVD, both at around £20 used, though one was ever so slightly cheaper. The next day, I loaded up the Amazon page again, in vain, I thought, but just to check, and now both sellers were somewhere around £19. Hmm, this could get interesting. Sure enough, the next day, or maybe even a few hours later, I check again, and the price was still going down. It was like one of those mad TV shopping channels where they keep lowering the prices. Eventually it got down to around £4 after a few days, but after keeping tabs on the situation so much, I was intrigued and also a little greedy, wondering how low will it go. The next day when I checked, the price had gone back up to £15. I was gutted. I missed my chance of getting the thing I so desperately wanted for a great price. I even sent an email to one of the sellers asking about the recent price cutting and if it would be possible for them to reduce the price again. A ballsy move which didn't pay off as they never replied. But then luckily the cycle started over and it kept reducing in price again and I eventually snapped it up. And wouldn't you know it, shortly after I'd managed to get those three DVDs, some bloody bastard uploaded all three series to YouTube for everyone to enjoy each with excellently formatted video titles and neatly categorised into their own playlists. Some people. I, um, the owner of this channel, would have even liked to have made shorter videos highlighting specific segments of the shows too if they had the time, but apparently they have this new project now, something about space and a brain or something? Anyway, I could complain about this other channel stealing my hard work by re-uploading everything with my titles, descriptions and tags, but when what I've done isn't the most copyright abiding thing, I'll keep my mouth shut. My favourite moments and episodes from these shows are the more general ones. 
Don't get me wrong, I can appreciate a beautiful church or castle as much as the next guy, but episodes dedicated to just one of those things can be a little tiresome. I much prefer the episodes where lots of different places or things are featured. It's also great to see and hear more about places I've actually visited, such as the seaside town of Scarborough in the traditional seaside episode, and when 1960s school buildings are crushed under the great boot of history, as I can very much relate to why they are so bad, having suffered in one for five years. 1960s school buildings in particular have been my bete noire. I've taught in rooms filled with buckets because of leaking flat roofs. I've seen plate glass windows fall out on the heads of innocent pupils. Well, I withdraw the innocent. I'm not sure I've met many innocent pupils. Savage beasts. I often find myself noticing a lot of different things when I walk around places these days, from the fanciest of buildings to even things like how the area is laid out, how the prominent industry of the area dictates the architecture, what materials have been used, and so on. I'd never noticed so many posh chaps on plinths before, and now I'm interested to know who these people are and why they're up there. I'm always happy to find new clips and stuff from John Grundy too. In the process of making this video, I found out that there are a few segments he made for the BBC called Grundy's North, a couple of which are on YouTube, and another one I was able to watch on the BBC website, with two others failing to play. So that's a little about John Grundy and his television programs. I watched them as a kid, and I grew to appreciate them as an adult. Now, where can I watch the rest?